community bank, been in that banking business for more than half a century. And he was lamenting what he saw as the stifling presence of the bank examiners and the uh, regulators. And he told me about banking in bygone days when he would meet Joe on the street corner in Frederick, Maryland. Joe would say, Nevin, I need some more money, and this is how much, and this is what it's for. And Nevin would say, uh, Joe, I'll put that money in your checking account. When you have a chance, come by the bank and sign the papers. Now, Nevin could do that because he knew Joe, and he knew Joe's business, and he knew Joe's father who had started the business. And he knew that if Joe dropped dead of a heart attack, that Joe's wife would come by the bank and sign the papers. I think that kind of a personal knowledge and judgment may be more meaningful in deciding who is a good credit risk today than your regulatory checklist. And I guess my question is, there's really not much of a role for that kind of knowledge and judgment in today's world, is there? I, you don't need to answer the question because I think the answer is very obvious. So let me yield the rest of my time to my good friend, Don Manzullo. Thank you, Roscoe. We had three different panels representing three different interests. The guys who need the money testified they're gone, or some are back there. You're, you're the ones that do the regulations. You'll testify and you'll be gone. And the guys with the community banks will come in and testify. And the problem is that the three groups need to get together. I. <laughs> Let me give you an example. Here's the guidance interagency statement. Uh, it says, banks are becoming overly cautious with respect to small business lending. Financial institutions that engage in prudent small business lending after performing a comprehensive review of a borrower's financial condition will not be subject to criticisms for loans made on that basis. In the next panel, the community bankers, uh, will testify. While Washington policymakers exhort community banks to lend to businesses and consumers, banking regulators, particularly field examiners, place restrictions on banks well beyond what is required to protect bank safety and soundness. The banking agencies have moved the regulatory pendulum too far in the direction of overregulation at the expense of the lending. And then you have the little guys out there, uh, Steve Gordon, who testified from Instant Off. Um, he says, I, I can create 25 green jobs right now, and 25% of those will be for people with disabilities, et cetera, et cetera, but nobody will lend to me. You know, this is not a situation where you have good guys and bad guys. Uh, you have three groups of totally honest people uh, who are working very diligently, who, who return calls of members of Congress very diligently, and everybody has a great desire to get involved. But here's the problem. The choke point for recovery in this nation is, the, is this. The Institute for Supply Management now says is above 50 and climbing for the seventh month in a row. This is the natural recovery of manufacturing. And I know of, of, of firms back home uh, food processing, there's a company back home, uh, Ibsen, they make the world's only portable vacuum heat processing machine. If you want it high end, it's lined with molybdenum. If you want a lower end, it's lined with carbide. It sells for less than $250,000. People are itching to get their, it's already programmed in 100 languages. People are itching to get their hands on that. And, and, and the guys go to the manufacturers, uh, go to the banks, and the banks say, you know, it's the regulators. But let me tell you what one bank <laughs> told a constituent of mine who has about eight to one of equity to debt. He said, we can't lend to you because your sub S is not showing a profit. Now, I want you to think about how stupid that statement is. But the bank that had been with this family for, for 30 years said the regulator told them that the sub-S is not showing a profit, and therefore they're going to classify the loan. Sub-S banks are not, sub-S companies are not supposed to show profits. They're all pass-throughs. And the two brothers that ran the business said, Congressman, what's going to happen to our family business? I would like to see this panel 
and I know you've been here a long time, when the, when the guys come up, I would like to see you sit behind them and listen to what's going on, because you sat and listened to the first group. And now here we are, we are on the brink of recovery. We're right at the edge of recovery. Orders for manufacturing are coming in. I've, I've got probably 2,000 manufacturers in my district, probably the only member of Congress ever going to warehousing school and, and to learn supply chain management. We're right there. We're at the recovery. We don't need more government programs to create jobs. These guys want to go back to work. I mean, something has got to be done. And I don't know what it's going to take. And, and John, you, you called me back immediately. Sheila Barr called me back. And, and Chairman Bernanke here uh, this, this week said, we will meet with your people, but you, you've got to have some plan. And, and, and I don't hear it. And it's not because of lack of bad faith. It's just, it's not getting done. Thank you, Chairman. I extend to that. I think the gentleman from Illinois was speaking for a very large number of members of Congress in that and not pointing fingers negatively, but expressing the, the anguish people feel. And let me say, I do appreciate it. We structured this hearing precisely so that the regulators would be the same. Which I apologize for the fact that because of prior equipments and I'm going to have to leave shortly. I we just want to announce that at 2 o'clock the bank panel will come in. So members here and other members who are listening, we do, we will have time to have that, that additional panel. We'll finish up uh, with more questions here. But I, I think the gentleman from Illinois has done a pretty good summary of, what, uh, of what's the prevailing sentiment that, uh, that I hear in the Congress. The gentleman from